Frequency response for a second order transfer function is very similar to what we already saw for first order systems. And uh, first of all, let me just point out that the corner frequency for this uh, system, where omega n is uh, given by omega n squared equals 0.01, that gives us a corner frequency of 0.1. The low frequency behavior is exactly the same as what we had for our first order systems, where we have essentially a magnitude of 1 and an angle of 0. What's different is the behavior at high frequencies where because of plugging in s equals j omega this is really going to dominate so we're going to get uh, some sort of o 1 over omega squared effect uh, which is what you see here and similarly the phase is also going to be different so the, the 2 and the negative 180 are both twice the effect that you normally see for first order systems so the asymptotes that we draw are uh, given here the, with, with the uh, dashed red line and first we have a magnitude of 1 up until the corner frequency and then the asymptote here is actually going to have, be a slope of negative 2 or if you want to be talking in terms of dB it would be negative 40 dB per decade. The phase asymptotes are going to be 0 and negative 180 degrees with again a transition occurring at the corner frequency. Now let's talk about the behavior uh, in the transition zone, which is the order of magnitude plus or minus uh, a factor of 10 around uh, our corner frequency. And here, the actual value and the, uh, what happens in this transition is actually going to depend on the value of zeta. Here, we've actually chosen a system where uh, zeta is equal to 0.1. It's actually a, a very lightly damped system. And a thing that's useful to know is at the corner frequency the magnitude and phase are going to yield negative 90 degrees for the phase and the magnitude is going to be equal to 1 over 2 zeta and that's in actual units meaning not db so 1 over 2 zeta uh, if you have a zeta of 0 0.1 that's going to be 1 over 0.2, or in other words, a factor of 5. So the peak here should actually be at 5, which you can't see that easily on this plot. Uh, and just to fill in the actual units for everything, we have 0 0.01 and 0 0.001. Here's what things look like for a uh, second order system with arbitrary values of zeta where we already saw that for zeta equals 0.1 you get a corner value of 1 over 2 zeta which is going to be equal to 5 and then if you plug in zeta equals 0.5 that gives us a corner value of 1 that's an equal sign there and then as you increase zeta of course the that value is going to decrease and then if you decrease zeta then this is going to head up and it's going to be have a higher and higher peak and in fact, if you plugged in zeta equals zero, you'd be heading towards infinity. And that's what you have for a resonant system where you feed in an input at the frequency of uh, omega n. So those systems tend to uh, be very uh, susceptible to failure because of their very high amplitudes. As far as the phase goes, the higher the damping ratio, the more this gets smoothed out. In fact, for very high damping ratios, it actually spills over to more than a magnitude of 10 on either side of the corner frequency. And then as uh, damping ratio goes lower and lower towards zero, then the uh, phase response is going to look more and more like the asymptotes themselves. So zeta equals zero would actually give you this uh, square transition zone. Let's take this opportunity to return to first order systems and just go back to a generic first order system here, A over S plus A. And uh, this is what the plot looks like for that. And of course, we're already familiar with the asymptote, which has a slope of minus 1 for high frequencies and 0 for low frequencies. And then we're also familiar with the transition zone, uh, plus or minus an order of magnitude where here we're talking about the frequency A and therefore the transition zone is from 0.1A to 10A. And then another thing to note is that the value at the corner for a first order system is going to be equal to 1 over square root of 2. And uh, 1 over square root of 2, if you take 20 times log 10 of that, you get minus 3 dB. So 
uh, you can either call that a factor of 0 0.707 or minus 3 dB. Those are equivalent. And that's a very standard effect for first order systems. It's always going to be that 1 over square root of 2. Let's summarize again uh, using the same slide that we showed before for uh, first and second order systems, except now let's just add in the additional information that we had about the corners. So remember for uh, first order systems, we said the corner frequency is at uh, A, and that the magnitude is going to be 1 over square root of 2, or minus 3 dB, and the phase is going to be negative 45 degrees. The, uh, for second order systems, the corner is going to occur at omega n, and then the value at the of m is going to be 1 over 2 zeta, so the smaller zeta is the higher that that's going to be, and then you can always use 20 log of m in order to find the amount in dB and then the angle is going to be negative 90 degrees.